Welcome to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. I am Reverend Mary Tillman, an Associate Minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. Our summer quarter study is Partners in a New Creation. Today we start in Unit 2, and the theme for Unit 2 is The Word, the Agent of Creation. This is lesson number one in unit two. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is The Creating Word Becomes Flesh. In the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is The Reason for It All. Our devotional reading, Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11. The background scripture, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. And our print passage is also John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Our key verse is John chapter 1, verse number 3. And from the New Living Translation Bible, it reads, Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our minds so that we may learn and understand the reason for it all. We know that everything you made in creation has a definite purpose, including us ourselves. So help us to be witnesses of your awesome power and the reason salvation is essential to our eternal life. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. In our lesson introduction, today we begin chapter two, or unit two, I should say, and the theme is the word, the agent of creation. In this unit, unit two, we have five lessons. The quarterly theme, Partners in a New Creation, focuses on how we as members of the body of Christ have the grand opportunity to become co-laborers with the ever-abiding Spirit of God in reconciling, recreating, and rightly restoring all things in the eternal reign of God. We begin our studies this week in Unit 2, which has, as I said, five lessons taken from the Gospel of the St. John. The lessons stress how the creating Word at work in and with humanity became flesh, healed the sick, saved the lost, re resurrected the dead, and granted, through the Holy Spirit, peace. So get your Sunday school book, your Bible, your pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this lesson. Let's get started. There are three questions I want you to consider. Number one, how does the Apostle John explain Christ's being with God while being God. Question number two, what was so significant about what God called John the Baptist to do? And question number three, why is it that so many of Jesus' own people rejected him? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. This will be a little longer than what I normally take with the lesson because this is such a fascinating scripture. I just love John, the book of John, and especially this particular lesson. This lesson is taken from the book of St. John, and he is the author. John was called a son of thunder and was a devoted follower of Jesus Christ. This is the disciple that was called the beloved disciple of Jesus Christ. He was one of the original 12 disciples and part of Jesus' inner circle. John was a direct eyewitness to the ministry of Jesus, so his story is true. His eyewitness testimony is affirmed throughout his gospel. John makes it clear that Jesus is not just a man, but he is the eternal son of God. John is identified as the most theological writer, significantly focusing on Christ's deity and the Holy Spirit's ministry. 
John explicitly states that his purpose for writing this book was to provide evidence that Jesus is the divine Son of God, Christ, the Messiah, and that all who believe in him will have eternal life. The intended audience is different between John and the other three gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew's writings were to the Jews. His purpose was to convince them that Jesus was the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy of the coming Messiah. The Romans were Mark's intended audience, and he identified Jesus as the servant, ministering to the needs of people. And Luke targeted the Greeks and presented Jesus as the Son of Man. John's audience was to both the Jews and the Gentiles, and it was written to the new Christians and to those searching non-Christians. John's gospel imagines a wide range of readers, not just those confined to a particular space and time. In addition, the book is not intended for a narrow, specific audience. It is better to assume that John's gospel was intended for a broad readership in cooperation with the general witness of early Christianity. Place and time are not of the utmost importance for this gospel. His book was written to believers everywhere. His purpose was to identify and prove that Jesus is the Son of God. Unlike the other writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John did not just report events in Jesus' life, but identified their meaning as they related to the specific purpose of his gospel. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the only source of salvation that leads to eternal life. In fact, it is recommended that non-believers and newly confessed believers read the book of John first when they get a Bible in order for them to realize who Jesus is and why it is important that all believers are convinced and committed to witness that Christ is the Son of God. The Apostle John wrote to give evidence of who Jesus really was, the divine Son of God, the Messiah. John opens his gospel by confirming significant characteristics of Jesus Christ that are crucial to proving his, uh, his deity. Now let's dive into this lesson. I find it fascinating and I hope you will too. This week's lesson's aims are, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Explore the meaning of the word for the world. Find true inspiration for life in Jesus. And live in relationship with Creator God because of the light, grace, and truth that Jesus gives. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is entitled, The Word, The Creator, and we find that in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The second outline is, The Word, A Witness's Testimony. And we'll explore that in John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. And the third outline is the word, the true light. And we'll find that in John chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. So let us kick it off with outline number one. The word, the creator, John 1, 1 through 5. And it reads, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This is the NIV translation. In the verses 
In this outline, the Apostle John proves the deity of Jesus Christ and speaks of the pre-existence of Jesus. John begins by explaining that Jesus, the Word, was God's creating and redeeming agent in the world. Key point number one, Jesus has always existed. Verse 1 clearly states it. In the New Testament, the word word is used as the title for Christ. In John's gospel, Jesus is called the word. Jesus is the word. Here John is making a declaration of the deity of Jesus Christ. In the initial statement, in the beginning expresses Christ's eternalness and pre-existence. The Apostle John opens his gospel account by affirming significant characteristics of Jesus Christ that are crucial to proving his deity. First, John establishes Christ's pre-existence before creation. Before the origin of the universe, Christ already existed. Jesus was in the beginning with God. John establishes the words intimate fellowship with God from the beginning by stating that he was with God. When the heavens and earth were created, Christ already existed. John used the word to describe his eternal nature. Jesus always existed. Genesis 1 and 26 says, then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Verse 2 states, He was with God. John simply restates the fact that the word Jesus was with God in the beginning. Also, it was through the word that all things were made. Jesus was an active agent in creation. Not a single thing now exists was made apart from Christ. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. And I went to the New Living Translation Bible for this translation because I like the way it reads. It says, For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. Verse 17 says, He existed before anything else. And he holds all creation together. And verse 18, Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. John's declarations in verses 1 and 2 affirm that the word Christ is eternal. He is not just with God, he is God. Though distinct from the Father, he is inseparably one with him. Christ is not a created being, but he is God eternal. Verse 3 reads, Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. That's our key verse. Jesus Christ is the creator of all things. John establishes the pre-incarnate Christ as God's agent in creating everything in this universe. Verse 4 says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. All that was created was the work of the Word, Christ, with the Father and the Spirit. John explains the self-existent, also the source of the physical and spiritual life as we read. Jesus was sent on earth in human form to represent light and salvation. 
Key point number two, Jesus is the light of the world. He is the source not only of physical light, but also the source of the full and spiritual life that God fully desires for all people. When Jesus came into the world, he came to guide and give humanity a way out of the darkness of sin. Verse number five says, The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. This means the darkness of evil never has and never will have power to overcome or extinguish God's light. Jesus brings the light of God into the world and not even the darkness of sin can put it out. Darkness here refers to the condition of anyone's soul when they walk away from Jesus who is the light of the world. One can turn on the light in their life by accepting Jesus. He is truly the light of the world. We used to sing that song, Walk in the light, beautiful light, come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Wow. Outline number two, the word a witness's testimony. And we find this in John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. After establishing Christ's deity in the first five verses of this chapter, John transitions to another who could bear witness to Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah and the Son of God, and the person of none other than John the Baptist. Verse number 6 reads, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. John the Baptist was chosen by God to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ to announce the coming of the light of the world, the source of our salvation. He came to prepare the way for Jesus. Now you remember back when Mary discovered that she was going to bear Jesus when the angel told her, that she was going to be the mother of Jesus, that Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was already six months pregnant. And she, when she heard from Mary that she was going to be the mother of Jesus, the baby leaped in Elizabeth's womb. So John was chosen by God, to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness, was such good news. Verse 7 reads, He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. You know what? John the Baptist was the first true prophet to appear in Israel in 400 years. His specific purpose was to witness about the Messiah, that is, to be the agent to pointing others to Christ for salvation. Key point number one. God sent John the Baptist for the specific reason of pointing people beyond himself to Jesus. Verse 8 reads, He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The book of John describes John the Baptist as a man sent by God, thus depicting him as a prophet. John the Baptist's role was to bear witness to the light that came into the world. John was not that light, but a witness to the light, Jesus Christ. It was not about him, but it was about preparing the way for Christ. Key point number two, as Christians, we have been called to point people to Christ and to share the gospel. John the Baptist announced the coming of Jesus as the light of the world. John called people to faith and repentance so they would be prepared to receive Jesus. But John the Baptist could not give them the light, the light of God. Only Jesus could do that. As Christ's forerunner, John the Baptist understood and accepted his role without calling attention to himself. We could learn a lesson from John the Baptist's acceptance of his role as the forerunner. We see John saying in verses 26 and 27 of this 
first chapter of John from the New King James Version. It reads like this, verse 26. John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. Verse 27. It is he who coming after me is preferred before me whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. Do you see the humility here? John the Baptist understanding his role to witness and to tell others about Jesus, recognizing I'm not the Savior, but I recommend you to the Savior, and I'm not even worthy to loose the sandal strap on the shoes that he's wearing. Believers must develop and maintain the same attitude. Christ is to be exalted as the ultimate source of eternal life. John the Baptist declared he was not the light, but a witness of the light. And guess what? So are we. Our job is to point people to Jesus. Our lives should live a life of what it is to live a Christian life that others will want to see our good works and want to be a part of kingdom building work. Let's move on to outline number three, the word, the true light. And we find this in John chapter one, verses nine through 14. Key point number one, Jesus Christ is the word, the truth, and the light. Verse nine says, the true light is, that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Again, I repeat, Jesus is the light of the world and he offers this light to all mankind. Verse number 10, he was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Neither the Jews or the non-believing Gentiles recognized Jesus as the promised Messiah. The tragedy of this rejection is in verse 11, and it reads, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Mm, mm, mm. Rejection by others is disheartening, but rejection by those closest to you is a heartbreaking experience. His own people, the Jews, rejected him. The people who lived in the town, especially his own people, refused to receive him. The Jews had the scriptures that predicted his coming, but chose instead to reject him when he came. You know, there are people in the world today who still do not know who Jesus is and refuse to accept him. Verse 12 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, He gave the right to become children of God. Key point number two, by believing and accepting Jesus by faith, we become sons and daughters of God. John chapter three, verse 36 says, whoever believes in the son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the son will not see life for God's wrath remains on them. Verse number 13 says, Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. It is a supernatural birth by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are children of God. Those choosing to believe are given the right to become God's children. Verse 14 in our final verse of our lesson today The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. The privilege to become one of God's children was made possible when the word Christ took on humanity and chose to live among us. The word is speaking of Jesus who dwelt among humanity He became flesh. Jesus walked and talked, ate and lived in the flesh. He knew joy, pain, suffering, and loss. 
Jesus took upon himself the fully human nature of man except for sin. The word became flesh to redeem humanity to God. In summary, the Apostle John wrote to prove Christ's deity and the necessity to believe his name to receive salvation. He presents Christ as a person existing from the beginning. John wrote this gospel to build faith and confidence in Jesus Christ so that we may believe that he truly was and is the Son of God. The Word became flesh to redeem humanity to God. Jesus, the Word, offers salvation to all who believe. This is a great book for believers and non-believers to read. The Apostle John introduced us to the Word because everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Jesus brought the plan of salvation and made it available to all who will believe. When we repent of our sins and confess with our mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead, the scripture says we will be saved. And you can find that scripture in Romans chapter 10, verse number 9. It is definitely a person's choice to either accept or reject Jesus as our personal Savior. But if we want to spend eternity with him, We must believe there is only one way. Truly, Jesus is the reason for it all. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. I hope that you will read the book of John. It is so enlightening and so fulfilling. And it is an inspirational to know that all we have to do is point people to Jesus. We must walk it. We must talk it. We must live it every day. It becomes a lifestyle. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I was introduced to him and I invite you to introduce someone to Jesus this week. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this lesson about your only son, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge that it is our responsibility as believers to point the lost and unbelievers to him. Therefore, please give us the courage and the clarity to proclaim this witness to everyone we meet. Thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we take this faith walk bearing witness of that light that we continue to walk by faith and not by sight. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Thank you and have a wonderful week.